This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Very Hard to Submit. Go to VHTSNY.com and check out their kimonos, compression gear, and apparel. This is a brand we are excited to be supported by. Their gear is high quality with a clean design. Go to VHTSNY.com and see for yourself. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Grapple Union Podcast. Javier Palomo alongside Anthony Zito. Our guest today is Vladislav Kulikov. Vlad is a judo black belt, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt, a master of sport and sambo, and the owner and head instructor of Kulikov Grappling Academy. Enjoy. I need the six minutes. That's what happens in that six minutes. You told me you're using any technique that works. Never to limit myself to one style. Keep an open mind. In order to become more peaceful, in order for you to become better and, and strategize your life. Hi, we're live. Man, it is a beautiful day. It is nice out today. Uh, you know, Every day is a great day. Now as a bonus, we have a good weather. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. In Chicago, we don't get we don't get very uh-huh. good weather, weather very often, so I guess that is a bonus. But I'm saying it's a good day for slightly different reasons. I'm less concerned about the sky and, and more concerned about the freaking flyer miles I got today. Uh-huh. <laughs> You're so clever. Yeah. <laughs> We got we got Vlad Kulikov in studio today. Finally, he, yes, finally. Hello, finally. Everybody. Technically, he's been in studio before, he just has. not on mic. No, we just <laughs> you, you stopped in to watch a UFC UBI. Event. Yeah, or oh, UFC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's nasty. when uh, Gordon Ryan beat uh, Ross Chief and OT mm-hmm. uh, yeah. in the finals. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> I'm, still, I'm, I'm still sad. <laughs> there's a lot lot of jujitsu going on now. I mean, Kasai. Kasai's I mean, tonight, isn't it? Yes, yeah, tonight. Yeah, yeah. Man. So, fight to win. Fight to win. That was, they're just, everyone just seems like just term after term every weekend you could watch something. There is an abundance of it, and we are we are in a period where it is more available than it's ever been before. So It's I incredible. Agree. Do you think it's a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's I good. Almost, I almost miss those days when, uh, you know, like UFC and Pride, mm-hmm. you had to wait for, never mind. And, you know, the only other good tournament was, uh, was Mundial's. Mm-hmm. There was no other, you know. Right. And uh, that's when... Hardcore fans are born, right. you know, uh, actually brings me to a slightly different topic, but uh, it just shows appreciation like an old Soviet Union They would make records out of uh, x-ray uh, film Okay. You know, X-ray film could yeah, be, yeah. you can cut the grooves in it right. and put music. So you know, I didn't know you. Would, I, I didn't yeah. know you could do that. Yes, but I didn't know yes. that. <laughs> so yeah, because there was like you know, uh, a propaganda anti-American lifestyle. Like you guys are bad and we are good. You know all that stuff. But people still like Led Zeppelin and Elvis Presley and what have you. So, so you a lot you. of hardcore fans would create, will make those pirated, you know, uh, yeah. records made out of uh, X-ray, uh, X-ray films. I didn't even huh. know you can pirate LPL albums. Mm. Well, I guess well, if you well, have, you, you can pirate if anything, you have the will. <laughs> a, a, any intellectual property. Yeah, yeah. And like, later so on, there, there's a way to like duplicate that yes, album a, onto a, onto yes. another. Yes, I didn't know that. Wow. And yeah, it no. used to be called Nariobrach on the ribs, you know, like a little play on words. <laughs> okay. To yes. So, so yeah. hardcore fans uh, would find a way. So what I'm saying is, uh, it just uh, it depends on what kind of person you are. But I'm just uh, I'm just saying it's a, it's a bit of a paradox, right? A little bit of a yeah. Now now it's a yeah. lot. E- it's more available. It's a lot easier to come by. Obviously, a lot of it's behind paywall, so mm-hmm. you got to have mm-hmm. you got to have the money. Or, yeah. You know, yeah. You oh, pirate absolutely. Stuff, you know? That's absolutely. still a thing, obviously. But and it's, you know. And uh, as a as a general note towards uh, mixed martial arts, again, I, I almost I'm happy to see what martial arts have become, as opposed to spectacle and a brawl. It became a sport in itself. It's legit. It's fairly recognized. You know, you can right. see it on the ESPN and uh, and Fox Sports and all that. Uh, but I miss that. I, I miss that spectacle. I <laughs> yeah. miss that style versus style. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. now nowadays, uh, martial art, mixed martial arts became so homogenized. So like, I appreciate it on one hand, but on the other hand, if you watch o- almost any fight, it's like the same damn thing. Everybody does the same boxing. Everybody does the same uh, kickboxing or muay thai. Everybody clinches the same. Everybody has the same jujitsu. 
So as awesome and advanced as it became, it became kind of boring. So I like the clash of styles. I like Anderson Silvas and Fatters and Crow Cops, you know? Yeah. 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 Just no, a little nostalgic note. Just uh, shows you It definitely makes a difference. Am. You know, like it, it is, you know, like I think people think they have the formula right now. They, right. they know what elements they need. Every once in a while you see a guy who kind of changes that. Like, a like you get a, a Wonder Boy or a Connor exactly. with, with the heavy Leoto. karate. Leoto you know, Leoto is another good example. Yeah. You know, so, so that can Or that pure can change. wrestler like uh, uh, Askren, you know? Yep. Of course he can strike, but he's still like no, a grappler. No, grappler. no, no. He can strike. Yeah. Oh, I would never say that. He's definitely well, ground and pounded okay. people. Uh, yes. You I see mean, not on the feet. It, he's you definitely not striking on the feet. I said strike. I didn't say kickbox. Striking. man. That guy can't throw. So yeah, sport. Next time I see him, I'll let him know that you said that. that. Well, <laughs> see he, he's I've awesome, <laughs> dude. What he did to Korshkov and Bellator was beautiful. That yes. little cow tipper, my mm -hmm. goodness. Yeah, he's beautiful. very talented. I'm I'm excited to see him. Who does he have another matchup already? Uh, they they have talked about matchups. I don't know that anything's official. Official. Yeah, I yeah. thought Masvidal was was the one that they're. That's I want to see a rematch with you know who. I won't mind a rematch, but I want I want them both to have fights in between. I don't need an immediate rematch. After agree, that fight. I agree. I yeah. agree. I'm just it was way too uh, undecided, you know, like yeah. way too controversial. With Robbie Lawler. I know Robbie Lawler's arm l l seemed to be limp or whatever, but uh, if you're out, you don't come to senses right away, and, and he sprung right away. So which leads me to believe he was not quite out. So yeah. I don't know. Yeah, and I, too many I agree. what ifs. Yeah, I agree. That I I I agree that was a weird stoppage and sh should have kept going. Yeah, yeah. No, I'd, I'd be happy to see it run, you know, see him running well, back. Robbie's but, going against, uh, he's already got another fight booked, right? Yeah, yeah. And they're they're, they're trying to book. Uh, against uh, Woodley. Yes. Yeah. But, oh, that's a good match. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, run it back. Well, they're, they're trying to book, book Askren as something. I don't know if that's been solidified, but Masvidal is the one that I saw. Yeah, I heard, I heard. And Masvidal. I know, and, and Covington's trying to insert himself into the whole thing because that's. Why is he? Isn't he fighting for the title? That's what he does. You know, he's just. But isn't he fighting Kamaru? Uh, no, I don't. Why? Me, hold on, I'd have to look that up. I mean, he, I yeah. thought he was like next in line. He he was poised as the number one contender. I think. right. But so yeah, I, I, I thought it's a that was a guaranteed thing that he's going to fight him. No, I I don't, I don't think that's set. Hmm. Okay. Well, could be wrong, but I don't. I Kamaru's out with an injury right now. Yeah, he right? broke his foot. Yeah. Yeah. So. so he's he's got some some recovery time. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, when you're Kamaru Usman, you're just going to work right through it. Apparently, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, they're just putting fights out every week. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. It is, you know, I I used to be able to say with confidence that I was a hardcore fan, and I Me. never missed a UFC. There was a period where, mm -hmm. like, like it would take dramatic circumstances for me to miss a UFC, mm -hmm. and I was still going to catch it, you know, on the replay mm -hmm. or whatever. Um, these days, it's not uncommon for me to be like, yeah, no, I, I, I saw the highlights. Same thing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you you wait too. for next day and scroll through Facebook or whatever. <laughs> yeah. I, I see the best man, parts. I hit, I hit up Reddit. You know, I, I see which matches were the best. When I don't have the opportunity to see a card, mm -hmm. you know, I, I see which matches were the best. You know, what were the best finishes and whatnot. Mm -hmm. If people are like, oh, this this match was absolutely awesome. Mm -hmm. I'll go back and, you know, right. and, and watch it and whatnot. But yeah. It's like, hard. It's hard. Yeah. Well, plus... Kind of simultaneously, there's not a weekend, it seems, where there's not one or two major grappling shows on, whether whether it's some world-level IBJJF type thing. You know, those are obviously only a couple of times a year. Mm -hmm. Or or a fight to win where I know somebody who's on the card. Exactly. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, Kasai or whatever. And then there'll be a UFC that, that same night. And it's like, well, I... Gotta yes. pick. Yes. <laughs> did you, uh, and often desire to nap wins too, you know? <laughs> yeah. Did, yeah, you, well, did you sign up for the fight to win in Chicago coming up? No. Why? Why would I? Why would you not? We've had this discussion before plenty I of times. I just like to see you fight, man. Well, uh, I, I appreciate in that. an event like that, I just think it'd be fun. Nah, nah. Like I said, maybe, maybe a fight to win that isn't in my backyard against somebody... That's I, in your backyard as well. Yeah, would yeah. you stop with that? You know they're trying to you, introduce what, what the judo. About, that? about what? About him not wanting to fight like with people in his own backyard. Well, like, uh, you, I'll, I'll leave it up to Javi. That really? you know, I'm sure he knows better. Oh, yeah, Javi, see, Javi's, let's, Javi's let's very make, nice. I let's make that, that the sound clip of the show. <laughs> so I just button press it. <laughs> uh, I, like, just, I, I just, I like to see your jujitsu on display. 
and that I'm is. I'm signed great up for place. Fuji. Come, but they can, you know, they, <laughs> they can find you people out of state and bring them in. I mean, you're at that level, Hav. I don't feel like I have the name value to draw people in and be like, "Hey, come, come to Chicago and fight me." So in that instance, like, if I, I don't were, know, I, I don't. If, if I, I were to want something like that. that, well, you know, Seth, you, you know how to get in touch with me. <laughs> you know, if, if I were to do something like that, I would feel it would be more appropriate for me to go to somebody else and be like, "Hey, you know, I'm going to be in Denver." When the fight to win Denver is on next, mm-hmm. you know, as a hypothetical, not saying I'm going mm-hmm. to Denver, but you know, um, could I get a match against one of the local guys? And that way, I'd get a chance to to you know not be fighting somebody who's you know a dude that I train with because because mm-hmm. you know he's my, in my weight class and local, you know, and, and and I'd get a chance to to you know show myself on that stage that you you want me to show. I, I just think you you deserve it, man. You need to show your jiu is very strong, man. It's great. I love watching you Thank roll. You. I love watching you fight, man. I just it's it's awesome. So and that's a, a platform for you because I know you're t- you know you talked to me about you know open up your gym one day. It's a great platform for you to launch your name out there, get it out there. It's seen by so many people. I know, I know. So. But yeah, no, it, the, this the whole like. Super fights versus tournaments, you know, mm-hmm. is a wildly different experience. And, and like, I'm totally okay with, like, oh, I signed up for a tournament. My friend signed up for a tournament. We're going to end up in a bracket at some mm-hmm. point together. Okay, cool. You know, may the best man win type thing. But it's like, oh, I have a month to prepare for this dude who I know and I've mm-hmm. trained with a bajillion times. And mm-hmm. now this is – Yeah, I, yeah I agree. Little, I hear that too. It's a little different. So, yeah, that's yeah. just the way I look at it. I mean, I think I, I understand where you're coming from. Um, yeah, I mean – yeah, that's the way you feel. But yeah. I mean, I think putting your name out there and just saying, "Hey, Seth, if you have someone that wants to come fight from you know wherever, California, or whatever," and I, right. it doesn't hurt. Just say, "Hey, this is what I'm looking for." If you have someone, throw them at, throw them at me. Right. But at least your name's out there. You yeah. Know? One of these days. Okay. I'm good with that. <laughs> he so, has no interest in any of the other stuff I did. He's like, you know, I. Went to Amsterdam, did a Sambo tournament. That sounds boring as hell. And when, well, when I know I, we're going to discuss that. We got the, the Sambo. <laughs> so what do you consider, like, what is Sambo? What, what, what is his master, belt rank? No, it's like master oh, he, of sport. Mm, there we right? go. There we go. Yes. You can Thank be you. taught. I can be taught. <laughs> Sambo, master of sport. So tell us all about being a master of sport. Yes, of <laughs> course. How does one acquire How that title? Acquire? That's, uh, that's okay, the okay. awesome title. Got you, got you. So uh, in any sport in Russia, regardless whether it's a combat sport or chess or fishing or whatever, uh, there are a few uh, stages before you get to master of sport. So I started as a junior, so I had to go through uh, three, uh, it's called razryad, kind of like Q in judo, uh, three junior razryad, and then three adult. And after you uh, complete that, you become a candidate to master of sport, which is pretty much could be like equated to uh, uh, brown or even black belt, I guess, right? Okay. And uh, in order to become master of sport, one has to win or place, and uh, do not quote me exactly on that, but uh, because criteria has changed, but you gotta win or place in two national events. Okay, so master of sport means that you place the one uh, national event in your particular sport, uh, Sambo in my case. And uh, the next step would be uh, uh, master of sport of international category. That's when, you, for Russian, it's, it's when you win or place in one or two European championships. For Asian, it would be Asian championships. For Oceania and Australia, it would be appropriate uh, geographic uh, region. And the next step, which would be paramount of mastery, is a merited master of sport. And for that, you should be, uh, you, you must win or place in the Worlds or Olympics. Since uh, Sambo is not an Olympic sport yet, uh, you have to place a win in the Worlds. Oh, wow. And after that, there is no more growth. So I'm just like a regular run of the mill. You know, good old master of sport. I'm not do even... They, just your basic master of sport. Your basic, yeah. <laughs> do they give you a something to show this? Yes, yes. Like they a, usually like badges and you have, it's called Zachotne Knishka, like a special... Uh, like a special book you know, recognized by your authority, by your organization, and uh, it's written there. So yeah, there's, yeah, there's the, the documentation. There's documentation, but yeah. there's no physical like medallion you wear. Or no, ring no, no, not really, no. I mean, why not? No. <laughs> That'd be cool. <laughs> Remember Jeff Speakman with the ring, you know? Uh, the ring would be cool. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Master I, of sport ring. That'd you know, be so Hey, listen, cool. you might be onto something. Fias, you know, uh, Sambo has very much uh, non-profit mentality, very much like judo would be, mm-hmm. you know, or wrestling or whatever. Mm-hmm. 
but lately Fia has kind of stepped up, stepped up their game with uh, with the videos and compilations, and it looks more and more appealing, you know, because Sambo is a great spot. I'm not saying, honestly, I'm not saying it's the best. There are plenty of things that could be changed rule-wise, but it's still a good base, and it's still a good style that can contribute to other styles, you know? Right, right. So I'm glad it's getting recognized. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. Now, you also do jujitsu yes. and judo. Yes. So which one started you out? Sambo. Your, sambo. Um, yeah. You were yes. sambo first? Yes. This is in, in Russia? In, in, correct. In Soviet Union, even. So I'm, I'm, I'm that old, yes. So, <laughs> Soviet Union broke up by 92. So, uh, yes, in Russia, I started sambo. And what, almost, part, what part of Russia? Moscow. Okay. Moscow. I went to uh, academy that's called Sambo 70, which is one of the most, the biggest, if not the biggest, and uh, most prestigious. There are a couple of schools, like uh, Russia is very uh, deep in talent pool as far as Sambo goes, but Sambo 70 is very well known, very well founded, funded. And uh, I was lucky. I, I'm really, really like so grateful. I was uh, born and I lived uh, a couple blocks away. And uh, I used to come to train with my uh, cousin, Vasily was his name, Basil, right? So uh, I'd go to his, uh, to his practice. Well, he did not practice at Samu 70. And uh, he was older than me. So all my training basically uh, ended up kicking like the deflated ball or <laughs> given piggyback rides, you know? So that was my training. <laughs> yes. And one time he told me, yo, listen, there's like a gym across the road. And he grabbed me by the hand, brought me there, and I never looked back. Wow. So yes, I was uh, very fortunate, very lucky like that. So then when did you start picking up other okay, sports? Okay, so uh, judo, for the longest time, for five or seven years, I trained only sambo only, right? Yeah. And uh, then I got beaten like everybody else with uh, Asian martial arts. I saw a Bruce Lee movie, it blew my mind, and I kind of, uh, being still young, not very mature, I thought that karate and kung fu is the way to go. And it took me a couple of years to realize that what I was practicing was actually legit because I uh, I found a VHS tape, like in a kiosk, another pirated production, and one of the first UFCs I saw, not the first actual UFC, but the first UFC I saw, which was UFC 6. Okay. And, you know, they had like a little banner on the kiosk. First time Russian Sambo fight. I'm like, oh, let me see. Because I, yeah. I did Sambo, yeah? Like, right. And exactly. And once I saw like, oh my God, I, I can do that. That kind of sounds cool. So that's what I was training for. Not to, you know, throw punches and kicks, but actually like rolling knee bar people. Right. And uh, so Sambo was first. Then Judo was like the most immediate uh, and the lowest hanging fruit. Because it's virtually, it was the same thing. You know, especially in Soviet Union, like uh, all the method methodology and even the names, we did not call Tayatoshi Tayatoshi. We call Peredinia Padnoshka the same way we'd call it in Sambo. So there was the next like natural progression. Okay. The only thing I had to get accustomed to strangles and no leg locks, but everything else was virtually the same. Okay. And only once I came to United States, I could not uh, find uh, neither in my neck of the woods, neither Sambo nor Judo. And I was embarrassed to go to train with high school wrestlers because I thought, you know, I'm like 22 or whatever. I can't go like wrestle with 15 year olds and uh i started getting my feet wet with uh brazilian jiu-jitsu and uh no where, submission grapple where was that at it was in warwick new york place i still live in oh, okay so yeah a friend of mine uh, started uh, a friend of mine his name was uh, gino mongeli gino if you hear me uh appear he just disappeared i don't know what the guy is and uh, he lived in Brazil. His parents, uh, I forgot what they did, but they lived in Brazil. So he lived in Brazil and he got to train with uh, Marco Huas. Oh, wow. Yeah, Marco There's Huas. a blast from the past. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, yeah, Gino had the uh, Ruina nickname, like all the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu guys had. And he was an uh, absolute encyclopedia of knowledge. So I'd go to him, not just to train. Because Gino, again, if you hear me, I apologize. He was not very good competitively. He knew a lot of moves. But my competition pedigree like smashed all the knowledge that he had once we, you know, clash. Uh, but he taught me every, you know, he taught me a lot. And uh, I was like, oh my God, there's like a, such a world of uh, grappling outside of freestyle Greco Sambo and Judo. Right. And he introduced me to Jiu Jitsu, to catch wrestling, to shoot fight and all that stuff. Wow. And uh, yeah, his club was like a free club, you know, free club. And uh, then after a few practices, I saw how he teaches. I'm like, hell, I, I can do that. And that's when I started, uh, my ex-wife and I, we started uh, our own school called Ultimate Sambo, which successfully ran for uh, 12 years after that. Wow. Yes. So who, so you're belted in jiu-jitsu? Yes, I'm, uh, I'm a black belt in uh, jiu-jitsu on the Rafael Formiga Barbosa of Soul Fighters. He's one of the co-founders of uh, Soul Fighters organization. Fantastic. You, you, you've you heard of Soul Fighters, right? Yeah, I train there, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Of course. Yes. So I received my uh, uh, black belt in uh, 2017. That's awesome. Yeah. 
man. This but you've been training for so I, long. Yeah, and you know, was uh, I was in a, in a weird, uh, I was kind of in a weird spot uh, as far as jujitsu. So, uh, like, I competed against those guys. So yeah. I was learning their techniques, but I never trained under any tutelage, right. under anybody like legit outside of Gino. And uh, so I, I was like in this weird limbo spot. I'm like, what am I? What kind of belt am I? You know, right, like, right. and I'll pretend I don't care about black belt and jujitsu, but I do. You know, <laughs> I did. You know, and uh, yes, after uh, uh, my good friend uh, Mike Paladino uh, introduced me to Formiga, right, and uh, started training with Soul Fighters and uh, got promoted immediately to a, a purple belt, and then shortly brown, and subsequently uh, black belt. Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah. A, a lot of a lot of holes in my game still like well, honestly whenever i'm not like uh trying to solicit any compliments but whenever i receive my black belt i'm like damn i thought i you know i should i should be a brown belt for at least another year year and a half maybe two years like uh i uh i, I know i have my leg locks and it's my specialty i know i have like throws to positions but as far as uh, bread and butter and the philosophy of jujitsu, like sweeping and passing, I know I'm aware of that, you know, but uh, I'm still not there. Mm. So whenever I receive my black belt, I'm like, ugh, now I have to like grow into that. Yeah. Now I have extra pressure to perform on uh, on a scale of a black belt. So uh, Do you compete in jujitsu? You know what? I have not competed in jujitsu. Um, uh, I had a big break in competition. Last three tournaments I competed was uh, with Javi actually, was in combat wrestling. And I competed in two uh, Shuai Jiao tournaments. And uh, as luck has it or whatever, fate, I did not compete as a, as a black belt yet in jiu-jitsu. Okay. But you, are you planning on that? Uh, yes. You want it's not... Uh, um, I hate like uh, cop-outs and excuses, but uh, I started my own academy. Uh, after Ultimate Samo broke up, I, I, I taught for somebody else, for different people actually, for seven years until one day I'm like, you know what? It's time. So I opened my academy and right now my sole focus is... Uh, to build it up. Sure. Right, Where right is this at? Academy? Yeah. It's uh, in Hewitt, New Jersey, Passaic County. Okay. What's it called? Uh, it's called Kulikov Grappling Academy. Sorry. K K KGA. <laughs> yes. KGA. Yes. KGA. And uh, yes, my, my good friends, Mike Academy is uh, EGA, Evolution Grappling Academy. So uh, it was purposely like somewhere there. So they kind of sound like. I thought it was just because, you know, could you easily replace that A with a yeah, B? Yeah, yeah. You, know? you know, in <laughs> retrospect, I should have called it Fusion Grappling Academy, so FGA. So F is after E. There so you it's go. yet another oh, spiral oh, in evolution. Go. And it's not reliant on my name, and it's actually Fusion. That's that's what I do, you know? Like, right. uh, once the sport... Uh, so many grappling sports, right? And some people gravitate to a Nawaza-only sport, like Kosen on Jiu-Jitsu or whatever, right? Or Sub-only. Some people like uh, stand-up only, like Kuresh, belt wrestling, and uh, Shuai Jiao, or what have you. And some people like it in, in between. So how do you do at your academy? Uh, uh, it's a good question. People often ask me if I teach specifically Sambo or Judo class or whatever. Uh, my normal class, quote unquote, is always a fusion class. We warm up. Uh, we warm up like pretty heftily. Uh, we uh, uh, learn and drill a takedown or combination. And then we learn uh, uh, um, and drill uh, a mat technique, like a guard sweep, pass or submission or combination mm -hmm. again. And then we spar. Uh, I do have one Sambo specific class, however. Uh, it's called Sambo Sunday. And I run this practice like, you know, like I was taught, like, like I would train in Sambo. The only thing, we only do stand up because we uh, dedicate a lot of time for, to Nawaza, to, to mat work, you know, to partner in uh, regular classes. And uh, for the most part, whenever we go live, most people do like jujitsu type of rolling. So, and they wear geese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Geese, yeah, traditional right. geese and they belt it as in yeah, jujitsu. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But the Sambo class, we only do stand up wrestling. So we warm up, we learn a move, and then we do a bunch of rounds and a bunch of like uh, throws and uh, crash pads and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Yes. It's fantastic. How old are you? Uh, how old do you think I am? You look young. <laughs> I mean, 44. Okay, so uh, he looks my age. Yeah. Yeah. All right. He's so happy about that. Look, I'm look very at this happy. beaming smile there. Yeah, it's great. Because I'm like, he's got to be around my age. I'm hoping. Well, how old are you? I'm 43. 43? Yeah. Oh, you look younger too. Oh, thanks. And I, I don't mean to butter you up with a compliment for compliment. I really, I'm, I'm surprised you oh, look, look younger. Don't worry. He, he has it like on record. This comes up every other guests or so uh, and everyone's like oh, man i thought you were like 20s 30s you know yeah they're, they're late always, 20s yeah. early 30s huh? yeah yeah yeah, yeah. No, that's why great, i try man. to shave like uh, if i if i have my beard grow my beard grows gray from yeah. my 20s so uh, yeah <laughs> i'm like uh. yeah that's great you know you look great shape what now what do you uh what do you walk around at and what do you compete at uh sambo has weight 
Yes. Weight as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah, of course. Yes, prices. yes, yes. You know, it's funny because uh, for the longest time, up until like uh, uh, from a uh, foundation of Ultimate Sampo in '99 till like 2005 or so, I wrestled uh, in 82 kilograms, 180. Okay. But my weight was about 170. So I was too lazy to cut seven pounds to one before. So I was always underweight in my you know, uh, 82 category. But nowadays I uh, matured into my body and I'm right about 180, 183. I see. It's great. Yes. Man, so no cutting weight. Mm -hmm. I, I hate great. that, man. Yeah. Listen, and again, so listen, uh, there is, a, there is a, a fable I like to tell people all the time. Mm. Uh, I used to have a friend. I say I used to. I guess he's technically still a friend. I just have not seen him in a while. Uh, his name is David Kuchava. He's the president of uh, Moscow Sanda Federation. You know, Sanda kickboxing with takedowns, okay. Chinese martial art. And he's fantastic. He's a great karateka. You know, he can kickbox and he can wrestle because he's Georgian. He did Chitaoba. So uh, we went to uh, we went to a kickboxing gym. And uh, funny thing, in the United States, so generally in the West, kickboxers come from uh, Asian martial arts, right? They started doing Kung Fu and then they go to kickboxing. Back then, early 90s in Russia, it, all boxers got to kickboxing. So basically, what it, the, the coaches will show a combination and I will say, just make sure to kick four times around so don't get disqualified or eight times around, whatever. There's like a X amount of kicks you're supposed to throw. Okay. So, you know, so it was like hardcore boxing gym. And uh, there's a mostly youth, right? There's mostly younger people like ourselves. And I'm watching, I'm not training. I'm like, fuck that, I don't wanna get punched in the face. <laughs> uh, I'm still a grappler. So I'm watching and there are two coaches uh, coaching and they look beat up. They look, uh, they probably in their late uh, 50s, early 60s, guts like mangled, beat up. So the group is warming up and there is an older gentleman about the same age as the coaches. And he looks like a jolly gnome. Like he's, you know, he's <laughs> running, he's jacked, man. He's got this beard and he's smiling and he's spying with all the guys working out and doing drills. And I'm impressed, right? And I'm pointing at him because I'm sitting with the coach. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so impressed with this guy. And like, fuck this guy, he's nothing. I'm like, well, what's going on? And the two coaches say, well, we were younger. We were like substitutes for Olympic teams. We won this, this, and that. This guy never achieved nothing. He like, he's a loser. And to myself, I thought, I don't know who's the loser here. Right. What do you want? Do you want to burn so fast, you know, and bright that you burn out by the time, by, right. by the time you're 50? Or do you want to be a, rec a recreational boxer or player or whatever, and just do it for your own pleasure, for your own development without going crazy? So that's a good question, you know? Yeah. What did we start with? I, I was going somewhere with it. What was the original question? General youth. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there we just, there yeah, was just, just something talking. I was trying to tie it up. I think we were talking about like, you know, because Zito looks young, you yeah. look young. Uh -huh. Obviously, weight grappling class. makes weight you- classes. Yeah. Weight classes. Weight classes, that was, yeah. that was in there too. I forgot, there was something I was trying to illustrate, some kind of philosophy. Cutting. So, what? Cutting weight cutting. cutting. Yeah, there we go. Cutting weight is very detrimental, right? Cutting weight is very bad for your brain, bad for your kidneys, etc., etc. So like, uh, uh, thank you, that's why. That's why I don't want to cut weight. Like uh, I'd rather not stress. Competition is stressful enough, right? right? So why stress yourself even further? Like uh, I went further than the old guy went. I did compete at the higher level, you know, including the world and stuff and couple sports. But uh, I didn't want to stress myself any further. Like uh, I'd rather, you know, I'd rather spare my brain and kidneys and whatever other internal organs and not cut weight, right. still compete and do whatever as opposed to beat the shit out of myself and be a crippled man by the time I'm 50, right. you know? I'm hoping to roll into my 60s and uh, I'm going to say something. I hope, you know, it's not a weird joke. Got I plenty, hope I'm, plenty of wood to knock on uh, if you need. Yeah, I hope yeah. I die on the mat when I'm 85 happy. So uh, <laughs> if you witness that, don't freak out. That's what that's right. what I want. That's right. You're like ah, That's what I want, man. Vlad's dead, right. but he's happy. Yeah, so Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, I mean, exactly. I just look at that weight cutting. Like we just had a, a UFC event. Anthony Pettis mm -hmm. jumped up to 170. Mm -hmm. I was like, 170? Was he crazy? But that's... It's probably his natural weight where he should be fighting. That's yeah, why I like uh, one FC because they check for hydration. Right. So like yeah, some kind of weight cut is fine, but like all those, so many reports about people dying and collapsing and having all sorts of you know heart right. issues. It's it's not good. What's the what? So what? what what's you the edge? you want to die because of the metal? Yeah. I, I know sometimes I, I forgot who said that. Was that uh, Anson Inouye? He said that uh, once in your life, spar or roll with the thought that you can die. Like uh, once, you know, once, okay, right. but you cannot do it every time. No. 
Can you, yeah. I mean, it's it's just getting it's getting. And ridiculous. I'm not saying it just for me. Maybe somebody wants to live and die by the sword. Maybe somebody will uh, tax their body to the max just to be a champion for as long as they can. But I'm not saying it's wrong. I just I disagree with it personally. Right. This is what I I find bizarre. The, everyone's in there in the UFC. When I'm talking about UFC, Bellator, whoever, they all want to be the baddest, right? They all want to be the best. They all claim to be great, and they're going to be the next champion. This and that. Okay, sure. Why do they try to game the weight class by trying to be the biggest guy I, in that weight class? Yeah, it's a, I'm going to try to lose as much. Yeah, I can't get that yeah, shrink yeah. myself down as low yeah, so I can be the bigger guy in that. If exactly. your skills are at that level. What I say, what I don't want to see the best weight cutter. I want to see the best fighter. That's what you I want to see. It is a bit of a cheating. Because listen, sometimes like if you wrestle, right, and you used to that, once you jump in into UFC, like uh, you always have like an unfair advantage of cutting weight, you know, as opposed to karate guys where it's not as popular. It's not in the culture. Cutting it's weight. Not yeah. the culture. So you have natural predisposition and a skill of cutting weight, but the skill of cutting weight is not freaking skill of fighting. Right. So I'd rather have the hydration test or whatever, right. whatever, you know, a means necessary to make sure that the athletes, combatants are in good health. Yeah. And then we will see who's the better fighter, not who's the better weight cutter. Right. Yeah. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, Pettis looked amazing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, why, why is he not fighting 170? Mm -hmm. I thought he would look small, but he did not look small at all. He looked great against... Uh, uh, Wonder Boy. Yeah. I mean, he looked great. I mean, the first round was a little rough. Listen, it, it looks it like an timing. average weight to cut is about 25 pounds. That's insane. It's crazy. Right. 25 pounds is a good weight loss for like a heavy person. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 25 pounds of basically what? Because all those guys are pretty much in shape, you yeah. know? So that weight cut is not the fat cut. It's it's all water cut. It's, it's tremendously yeah. bad for you. Right. 25 pounds on an average. Sometimes right. it's more. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's really, and it'd be fascinating if they just said, you know what, all right, fuck all this wake up. How many guys would be, they'd have to add probably more weight classes in the upper field, right? They, 205 would probably have to add 220, you'd probably have to add a bunch well, of more weight classes. You got, like, nobody that fights at 125, which doesn't exist anymore, technically, but right. is actually that weight. Right. Everyone gets bumped up, yeah. right? They yes. add the 165 so belt. Everyone, everyone's going up 15 to 20 pounds mm -hmm. minimum. Right. Um, they don't have enough weight classes to do that right now, so they would absolutely have to make a bunch of new weight they classes. Um, a 195 and a 165 would be Somebody must. is still going to figure out how to game the system. Mm -hmm. Don't care. Like Somebody's going to figure it out. Of course. It's an it, archetype of a personality. Right. 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 Um, and then that person will probably have some crazy advantage till everyone else figures it out, and then we get back right back mm -hmm. to square one. Mm -hmm. So – um, yeah, the, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I think, doesn't the UFC tell you where you need to fight? I mean, I thought that's what I heard about, um, that, ju uh, jujitsu girl. Like they said, no, this is what, this is where we want you to fight. And then she had a fight at that weight class. Mackenzie Dern are you talking yes, about? Right. Um, I'm not sure. Cause she dramatically missed weight several times. She did, but usually, I, I believe, usually I believe after it was some like, weight hey, misses, this is, this, is where, like, this is where you need to fight. You right. Know? And then that, that was it. That's just, this is what we're offering you. So I think they just need to be a little more strict and say, listen, Pettis, you look great at 170. <laughs> why you, why you want to go down to 55 or 45 again? It just seems ridiculous. Right. Well, I mean, so thanks to your boy, Connor, you know, like everyone wants to be champ champ now. Yeah. So guys are going to be jumping between one or two weight classes that they can. And since you probably can't go up to the next category, Pettis is going to want to stay, you know, he's going to want to become champion at 155 if he could, you know, ideally. Yeah. And, you know, if he wanted to go for another championship, 170 would be the other option. So, yeah, this champ champ thing is bizarre. What do you think about that? Like, yeah, that's weird. It's weird, right? Yeah. It's like, it gives a fuck. And exactly. Champ. And uh, listen, my, 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 I still prefer mixed martial arts to, let's say, tennis or whatever. But my love and passion drastically diminished. Yeah. Like I, I, I couldn't care less if I wanted to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it depends on who's fighting on a given night these days. That's true. That is yeah. absolutely There's true. There's still as well. some great matches out there. Course, for sure. Of course. Of right. course. No, I just, just, look just, on the card. Uh, is there a Dagestani on this card? Mm -hmm. <laughs> as we said before, like uh, the market is so saturated with events, it's hard to keep up. And, and your interest is like over saturated, over, yeah. you know, over delivered. Right. right. It's like when you go on your Instagram feed and all you see is yeah. Brazilian girls and every one of them has their ass hanging out and it's like, what am I doing here? They're all the same. 
That shows yeah. up on my feed. I, mean, I don't I know think why. You, I, I think no. you need to change your feed I, a I don't little know, bit here. I, you know, first like, of all, I just do like you know. I guess I have like snowboarding and um, jujitsu, but for some reason these Brazilian girls pop up. I don't know. I'm not looking mm-hmm. for them, but mm-hmm. it must be because I it's, search it's Brazilian. Got, yeah, it's got to be the jujitsu link there. But it's um, weird. Not that like, I don't like, like. Listen, not not that I'm saying I don't get that in my feed right, either. Right, okay, right. Mm-hmm. but like it, it's totally like. I got friends that mainly used Instagram for like guns and knives and they're not getting, you know, That's half naked Brazilian <laughs> girls in their feed. Okay. <laughs> they are, however, getting girls like doing like bow hunting okay. and, right. and, yeah. and, and things like that. So like Instagram is still trying to push that because mm-hmm. yeah, they know yeah. it gets a lot of likes right. and, and these are related subjects. But. It's ridiculous. I'm just like, what What are these girls doing in there? And they got hundreds of thousands of followers. Man, like, well, that's, what Instagram, that's, that's what Instagram is, man. Yes. <laughs> it's yes. so bizarre. Man, as, as, uh, as a species, we're sad and path- pathetic, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird. But anyway, so that's... <laughs> going down the Instagram rabbit hole I'm here. Not going yeah. down yeah. there. No, I, pro- I stay away. Honest, I'm no angel by no means, but I stay away from this type of deal because I don't want to give him grat- gratification and satisfaction of me drooling over them. No, I not never me click on like no. uh, likes. You don't like uh-huh. no. <laughs> It doesn't even come up in my field feed anymore. I, I don't follow people uh, whose profile is hidden. You know, and mm-hmm. sometimes like I'll click a- a- as an obligation. I'll, I'll click to follow, and then I see it's like food pictures and selfies. I'm like, you know what? Mm, you know, yep. I'm, uh, I uh-huh. have no interest in that. Right. Post a technique or something, you know. Yeah. And uh, if it's a friend, or, you know, and uh, there is family or whatever, then there is uh, sure. interest. But right. if somebody I don't know, like I, I don't need that. I follow very mm-hmm. few people. Yeah. One yeah. of the people yeah. I used to follow was Mendez, but I stopped following them. <laughs> I still can't believe because this. they just. I mean, they st- Paul still shoots me <laughs> stuff that, of their cool stuff because they started posting like family pics i don't need mm-hmm. to see their family yeah i don't care like no just show me jujitsu yeah exactly uh, show me matrix jujitsu like yes. you always do show me the matrix yes. but i recently started i found this small guy jujitsu uh and it's pretty fucking awesome you're probably ruining it right now like like they're like oh we're we're gonna get a thousand <laughs> thousand extra likes suddenly and now we small gotta start guy posting food pics and, man it's you know, it's really cool because i think like, our acai sponsor this mm-hmm. is great <laughs> yeah so i started following them because they actually okay. show great techniques mm-hmm. i've i've taken a few and i applied it to my rolling and they're legit i'm happy mm. fantastic you get a little instagram logo for your belt yeah right <laughs> three stripes in an Instagram logo. He's ready for black. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, man. But we had a... Uh, I teach the uh, beginner's class, so a st- we had some new students show up this past week, and one of them did... The, I, I didn't know what... I was kind of like, oh, why are you going to talk like this? So weird. Oh, so okay, he was like... Okay. I was showing him just an arm bar, mm-hmm. right? Because once we have when we have new, new people... We just go, we sh- change the class a little bit. We just go, okay, we're going to show you arm bar. Mm-hmm. We're going to show you triangle. We're going to show you Kimura. Just simple, simple mm-hmm. stuff. Just get them bodies moving. So yeah, I have the blue belts then work out with the white belt. So I have one of my blue belts working with him and or one of the blue belts, not mine. Uh, and so he's doing arm bar. And the brand new white belt's like, well, can't I just punch him in the face? Mm-hmm. When he's got me. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, you can't. He's like, well, look, I could just hit him. I'm like, yeah. You can't really do that. That's not going to work in mm-hmm. you know, even a real scenario. So I'm like, how am I explaining? I said, well, do you watch the UFC? He goes, yeah. I go, well, You ever see anyone punch their way out of an arm bar? You ever see that <laughs> people arm bar in the UFC? And that's without a gi. That's just, I'm holding your arm and you're going to get, your arm's going to break or you go, you're not going to punch your way out of it. He goes, oh, okay. You know, I you know, didn't know what, what else to say. What, what couple like, times happened with me. So uh, I love them up. <laughs> it's a same type of scenario. Like I'm showing someone, and people had uh, had no experience. It's not even they being smart asses. They actually being uh, very curious and yeah, inquisitive. Right. right. And they're like, "What if I punch you with the free arm? What? Oh, I can always punch you." And I say, "I have two sets of MMA gloves. Let's put them on. Let's see what happens." But remember, if you know, if I grapple and you punch me, I'm going to punch you back. And nobody, there was no takers. <laughs> no takers. It, it only happened like a handful of times. Right. It only happened. And I was serious too. And I was not being like uh, vindictive. I was just trying to show. I, I was not going to like smash him. Right. But I'll give you punch me. I'll punch you. And let's see what happens. So, you know, right. and uh, nothing happened. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. So I think every instructor is going to at some point deal with a guy who's like, 
you know, what if I punch you? Right. Maybe the same guy, but probably a different guy is going to be like, what if I gouge your eyes out or bite mm. you? There's always a gouge your eyes <laughs> out or bite you guy. Yes. Yeah. Um, yep. There's usually somebody who's going to bring up like, like, what if they've got a gun? What if they got a knife? And obviously those are things that, sure. you know, if you're teaching self-defense based uh, uh, grappling, you, you know, you got to address those at least somewhat. Let's but, address those real quick. If they have a gun or a knife. If they have a knife, Your run. Is useless. <laughs> run. If they have a gun, if you can run, run. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think to this day, one of my favorite stories that I heard secondhand, I, I so wish I was there, was we had a guy who was like the ultimate what if guy. Oh, and he'd be like, uh, what if you get uh, jumped in an alley mm -hmm. and they've got a, a baseball bat and, you know, like, like yeah, yeah. these wild <laughs> scenarios. <laughs> Not just what if, but very specific <laughs> right, what if. Right, right. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you know, which of these techniques will you What will, if the will guy doesn't again? have left top so he cannot armbar him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. 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 The, the, the what if guy is, is like, yeah. Yeah. Priceless. Priceless. <laughs> yes. But, uh, you know, like if you instruct for any length of time, you, you kind of decipher all the archetypes, you know? There's mm -hmm. like, so, you know, there's, okay, so there's a judo guy, he's going to call everything Japanese, you know? Right. There's a wrestler guy, he's going to blow through people. There's a heel hook guy, there's a tough old bastard guy. Uh, there's <laughs> I'm at least two of those. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. There is what if guy, and there is a spaz guy. There's like archetypes, and you've seen them all. Right. You've seen them all, and then, you know, you develop your way of uh, dealing with them. How do you, because you've been, in, in this game a long time so is Javi but some things that I I find myself struggling with when in teaching is just getting people to relax like that's for me I'm like there's we have a guy who's just jacked and he's you know I'm just like dude just just, just relax, and he, he still can't do it. It's a hard concept, man. Listen, it's uh, uh, um, any kind of evolution does not happen overnight. It's just uh, constant culturing and explanation. So there's nothing. I, there's no, no exercise I can teach him no. specifically. I'm just like, dude, you're there, just straining yourself. There's stuff you could definitely try. What's that? Um, well, first, uh, play some Enya. You know, some nice calming. <laughs> <game. laughs> okay. Um, so guys that. Now, now, is he just always hyphy, or is he like he's using a, a lot of strength? He's and a white stiff? belt, you know. Oh, yeah, he's of new, course, right? of course. So he's just everything he's doing is just so rigid, rigid. Right. So right. more than I've ever seen in a normal white belt. He's just, mm. I'm like, dude, you just gotta re like. I just if I just put my hands on him, I'm like, dude, you're so tense right now. Mm -hmm. You just gotta. But he just yeah. he just so does nothing clicks. Yeah, little things that I find can help there. Uh, one. People have the energy to be tense and rigid because they have the energy. So harder warm up, wear them out, do do some mm. sparring rounds before really working technique. Like that's a pretty old school mentality of you. You're going to be exhausted, so right, you right. can't use your strength. When, you know, so that can work with some people. Or sometimes it's just like, uh, now I'm now I'm useless. You know, um, the old close your eyes while you're working on this, and just you know th that that inherently calms some people down um in fact, oh, have, you, have you really like just it. just doing technique with your eyes closed yeah like, like we, we've we've one of the guys I, I worked with at lcct uh was actually a big fan he would roll with with a blindfold on he, okay. would, he would bring two blindfolds and you know like anyone who was willing to do it with him you know we we both blindfold up obviously this is a terrible idea for like takedown mm -hmm. practice <laughs> but it, but it's totally fine on ground war sure yeah um, and like that does calm a lot of people down, hmm. but like if you're, you know, scared of the I, dark I gotta house, try it out. I, I usually just, uh, verbally ask him to like chill. Yeah. Right? yeah. But like when you're brand new and, and like, even if your instructor is saying it to you calmly, like somebody calmly going relax is actually kind of stressful. Because you don't know what to do and you don't know how to relax. <laughs> yes. That, that is a little paradox. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, like, like. Everyone kind of has to find their chill and their rhythm. Um, I find a lot of people like you know what also here you know what there we go. Try to find out why they're stressed. Are they uh, anxious to perform? Are they anxious to impress you? There's usually an underlying uh, underlying uh, 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 source of their anxiety. You know, yeah. and once you figure it out, you know this is not Olympics. We're here not to win. We're here not to collect gym taps we're here to get better right so th that's what i usually say yeah that's good yeah it's yeah. it's it's tough man it's not it's not an easy thing to do you know i got something that was really great in moscow training camp once what's that the theater actually we were sparring and he told me 
just play the game because I was like, he's much better than me, and mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, just really stiff. And just play the game. He's like, mm -hmm. relax, yeah. play the game. Yeah, so, and it really helped me. That's funny. Yeah. I say something similar. I say, imagine your wife or your girlfriend is watching you, and you want to impress her, and you know, be smooth, like to also do this yeah. or that. Everybody laughs and relaxes. <laughs> <laughs> Important. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean. Like it's real hard when you're first starting off because you you don't know shit, exactly. man. Like like you don't and even like know how to move. Says, nobody in the history of saying relax ever relax, <laughs> right? And especially if you don't know what to do, you know what's expected. So yeah, identify the source of anxiety. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm like no, you don't have to. I'm already impressed to hear Jojo. You know, X Y Z, and just roll, learn. Shout right. out to Jojo. Yeah, <laughs> whoever that is. Uh, yeah, no, that's it's that's good advice for sure. Yeah, I mean, I'm. It's so it's just so interesting when I see different people, and some people are just unnatural. Man, we have this yeah. one kid in our class. This kid is. Yeah. I'm like, dude, have you ever done? He's like, no. I'm like, you've never done jujitsu. Yeah. I it's hard S to believe. Some people have God's gift. <sighs> just athletic. Mm -hmm. He's like, I did I football. I'm like, dude, you're like built for this, man. man. No wrestling, but yet he just understands. Some people his body. have natural. Football translates pretty well into grappling, honestly. I mean, there's a lot of yeah. a lot of elements of it already mm -hmm. in there. Is there? hundred percent. I've never done football, so I don't know. Well, just like like knowing how to tackle and move your body and, and things like fence. that. The, yeah, okay. exactly. Yes, level okay. change. Yeah, yeah. Competitive mentality. But this kid took the back where I was like, what? Like just took someone's back. I'm like, holy fuck! You've never done I mean, jujitsu. Had you at least showed him how, and he just nope. picked it up, or nope. he's just like, oh, this I makes no sense. I have no idea where he got it from. See, that's, me, that's where me, it gets scary sometimes. See, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Me and one of uh, other instructors, Andrew, were just looking and we're like, did he just take that kid's back? It just seemed. I don't think that this kid's lying to us because why would he still wipe out? But it just he right. just either. Well, Another level. Yeah, I, I, I tell that, We were yeah, actually just talking about this, the, uh, me and Tom Grant uh, driving over Vlad's seminar. But like when Maurice joined the gym at 10th Planet Chicago, everyone thought he was full of shit when he's like, no, I've never grappled before. But what nobody knew is he had a background in both karate and competitive rugby. So he'd never done – like jujitsu before, mm -hmm. but he'd definitely been in the scrum and grappled around. He had mm -hmm. natural athleticism, right, right, you know. Right. So of course he he picked up things very quickly. Seemed you know seemed like just a supernatural talent for it, mm -hmm. and you know that that was just him tr in many cases just translating the skills and and you know having that athleticism to 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 know how to learn mm -hmm. how to move his body quickly. Yeah. So yeah, that, like that oftentimes you, you'll find guys that have either natural athleticism or have done some seemingly unrelated sport right. that helps them. Mm -hmm. Like I know a lot of guys that do jujitsu that, that come from a hockey background around here. I don't know how common that is in other parts of the country, but around here, you know, there's always a couple of dudes, it seems at every gym that, that played hockey. And those guys oftentimes adapt really well to certain aspects of jujitsu just because they, they relate it. Yeah, I don't know what the exact correlation is, mind you, mm -hmm. but they, they they relate certain things to to practices that they had from hockey. Mm -hmm. yeah. So yeah, I should actually talk to them. Like I, I know several hockey players that have come to jujitsu. I should talk to them and be like, hey, what's the <laughs> what's the common thread here? Why are there so many hockey players in jujitsu? Mm. But uh, yeah, yeah, because that's something taking jujitsu and doing hockey. I mean, yeah, not not related at all, related but just all. you know, right. could just be you know, I hey, I need an athletic outlet. This seemed good. Exactly. Seemed yeah, good, maybe. but. There may be something more to it that I'm not seeing as a non-hockey player, too. Right, right. Oh, man. So, Vlad, what else are you into besides sambo, judo, jiu-jitsu? What else are you doing? Uh, besides martial arts and fighting, I'm into um, music. I'm a huge, like, uh, walking bullshit encyclopedia are you? of anything music, yes. Were you the guy in the Soviet Union making LPs? This is how he knows. <laughs> this is how he knows. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was Set your limitations run out. You're okay, man. <laughs> I was run. I, I was raised in the eighties. Uh, technology was okay back then. <laughs> Th those on the ribs records were done like a little bit earlier. Okay, a couple of decades before. Yes, I like you know music movies. Uh, fairly indifferent to not fairly completely indifferent to video games. I never played a single video game in my life. I'm, you know Javi and you yes, don't play video yes, games. Yes, I know. That's wow. why. Yes, he knows me and that, Riley. That, that's like, why I'm not looking that. at Javi when I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah, so a avid reader, you know, uh, okay. journalist by education. So uh, yeah. this is something that always strikes core with me, you know, reading books, fiction. What are you, what are you listening to? What's on your... Uh... Uh, when I was younger, I know uh, it's another thing. When I was younger, I was like a true fan. I had like five records and I was happy as pig and shit. 
But now I became such a consumer, you know, I want yeah. more and more and more. So obviously, like, uh, not obviously, you don't know me, but uh, I love metal. Metal is where it's at. But like I was, 80s metal? Uh, Hair also, band? Uh, no, 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 not necessarily, like real metal. You ACDC? Know? Uh, Iron Maiden, Judas Priest, Metallica Slayer. Okay. A and Paint Air and, and above. Uh, but uh, musical tastes are fairly uh, eclectic. I would listen to Cirque du Soleil or Sade right after I listened to Slayer. Sure. Yeah. That's awesome. So just, just like music, just relate, you know? And this is why we had to get him to Kuma cor Kuma's Corner. Yes. So that yes. he could try out the fantastic Chicago yeah, Burgers yes. with the heavy metal theme. How is that place? Was I've yet to go. I, at first, I didn't want to go. Nikolai, uh, <laughs> uh, yes, there's another friend of ours, another Bulgarian gentleman, Ivailo. So Ivailo chose that place like five times, right, Nikolai? <laughs> so uh, and Nikolai says, you want to go to Kuma Corner, it's the metal burger. And I'm like, I, I want to talk. I don't want to, like, I listened plenty of metal already. Yeah. So at first, I uh, declined the offer. But then I said, let's go, and I, and I loved it. It was great. It was good. Uh, at least at the time uh, when I was there, music was not blasting. We, we, we were able to enjoy the music and carry on the conversation that's good. and enjoy the food. So if you like you know, craft beers and good burgers, that's a good spot. That's yeah. good, uh-huh. And yeah, I'm, not, I'm not getting paid to say that. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Free advertisement. Um, yeah, yeah. Just there's actually just a good place. The one, there's one not too far from my house in Schaumburg, so that's usually the one we go to. But, of course, the, the, the one in the city is the main one. Oh, so there's one. I didn't know there was one in the city. Wow. Yeah. I think okay. they have three locations now. Because I know the one in Schaumburg. Yeah, yeah. That, and that's, like I said, that's the one I always go to. Yeah. That's not on Higgins. What, what street is that on? Uh, it's off Golf. Golf Road, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, right, 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 right across from the mall. Right by Meacham, right? Yeah, a little, little, right little, little east of Meacham. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I got to try that place out. Yeah. No. Delicious. Um, huge variety of, of options in terms – because, like, like you know, every burger has, has like, some metal theme to yes. it from some album or, or, or whatnot. Or, or, or band name. Or, yeah. Okay. Yeah. What'd so, you get? Uh, what was it called? Ka Kaijo, yes. It was it was fairly there, there was one burger called the Black Burger and it comes with mashed garlic, uh, jalapenos, uh, homemade hot sauce. You can only imagine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had the, the one I had was just had like a, a blue cheese crumbs and uh, frizzle onions and yeah, yeah simple. Perfect. Mm -hmm. But delicious. Oh yeah, it was it was yummy. Yeah. You don't come to Chicago and not try the food. I mean, that's mm -hmm. what we're known for. Yeah, the food's great in Chicago, for sure. Yeah, not great for you necessarily, mm -hmm. but definitely great taste. Well, best for you, right? my burger had no bun, so. <laughs> okay. No bun? Yeah. Yeah. No bun. Just lettuce? Food. Yes, I had oh. a salad on the side and, uh, and uh, just uh, meat with whatever on Do top you not of. eat um, carbs? Uh, I try not to, yes. Uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not uh, about to engage. Like, you know... Uh, Meal plans or diets are very much like your personal beliefs or religions. They feed you and maybe they feed like a group of like-minded people, but they're completely wrong for somebody else. Mm -hmm. So uh, I started to experiment with a ketogenic diet back in 2011. So I have eight years. And in the beginning, I used to do it cyclically, meaning like I'll do it twice a year for like eight weeks or so. And starting with a couple of years ago, I switched completely to keto. And I, me personally, I never look back. So to, to me, it works wonders. I have uh, energy, I have the looks, I have the no fat and, and yada, yada, yada. Yeah. Wow. So you've been on keto for a while. Yeah. Yeah. So like uh, in a year, I'll basically just like, uh, you still need carbs. Carbs are important for certain brain functions and uh, DNA reproduction. So you'll still, like even if you eat broccoli, you still get some carbs, you know? Okay. So uh, that's why I try to get my broccoli from uh, like uh, leafy greens and certain uh, certain starches, not too much on my cheat day, you know, but 80% uh, uh, of the time I eat uh, ketogenic. Wow. I eat so no pasta, no, no bread. No pasta, no bread. I still like it, man. Of the habit, I mean, I ate that for <laughs> damn near 40 years, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, bread and uh, potatoes and, oh, and my pasta, goodness. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rice. Right. Oh, oh, I crave rice so much sometimes. Yes. Rice is my favorite carb. Yes. Followed by bread, followed by pasta. Yeah, bread. It's a tough one for me. Yeah. I love it so much. But listen, it's like uh, it's like anything. If you do it enough times, you kind of like cut that groove, and it becomes 
maintenance and not rescue anymore you know exactly. so you get uh, it yeah. becomes habitual yeah i personally find that of the diets i've tried down through the years like a keto style diet is easiest for mm -hmm. me but let's bear in mind i'm a borderline carnivore to begin with <laughs> okay like, like i i'm not huge in fruits and veggies at all so giving up fruits is no big deal mm -hmm. and, you know obviously i have to mm -hmm. have some amount of vegetable and whatnot um giving up bread and pasta and rice is a little bit harder but i like dairy and i'm allowed to have cheese and yep. cream and yep. things like that so you know like like it's not a big sacrifice um it isn't always the easiest diet because you know you got to be like yeah can i have my burger with no bun mm -hmm. or you know and uh, everybody looks at you like you're some weirdo and yeah. you cry in the corner on your burger <laughs> delicious so delicious because burger. of your tears i mean you look great so i mean thank you obviously working yeah. i mean it's great yeah, yeah, and like I, mean, I, said, I, I know that eventually, when I was eventually, my, you'll have to stop eating pizza constantly. I'm gonna, I mean, I I definitely brought it down, you know. So, Dude, like in my thirties, I I totally changed my diet. Me, me, same thing, man. When I was younger, I would eat anything right. in <laughs> any quantities, right. right. and you get away with it before practice, yeah. after practice, instead of practice, before <laughs> you go to sleep, and I wake up all jacked and everything else. But about the age of 35, I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. I ate something and it's not sitting right. And I see a little bit over yep. here, regardless of how hard I train, how hard I train. And I still train pretty hard. So that is when I had to uh, take a step back and take a, like a big holistic look, you know. Uh, yeah. I got to eat this and that and uh, uh, take something else into consideration into my training regimen outside of actual training. Yes. Such as eating the right things. Right, right. Yeah, we, totally we cannot agree. talk about what we accomplished 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. or, or let me revise that. When we were in our 20s, because I mean, I remember going to wrestling practice, eating a Burger King double cheeseburger as I drove, yeah. getting right on the mat and just being yeah. like, no, this is normal. This yeah. is fine. Yeah. And now it's like. Drinking Mountain Dew as you practice. <laughs> <laughs> like a sugar is good for energy, man. Right, 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 right. Yeah. That chocolate looks fine. <laughs> All the yeah. weightlifters do this. It's fine. Yeah. Um, but oh, like yeah. now I'm like, yeah, no, I like to like to have a nice empty stomach when I practice, yeah. you know, like oftentimes and haven't eaten within the last exactly, three to six man. hours. And once you get in this <laughs> lifestyle, you you like, you stop being slave for food, you know, yeah. like uh, a lot of people design their day around taking meals or whatever. I can go a whole day without eating. I, I, I do intermittent fasting and sometimes I do I'll do like thing. 24 hours or 48 hour fast. Not all the time. that far. But I'll really? definitely do 16 yeah. hours, yeah. easy, 18 yeah. hours, yeah. no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Bother me. I mean, and with, you feel great, right? I feel great. There yeah. we go. With my schedule, it's effortless for me to for, for me to like a twelve hour fast is nothing. Like mm -hmm. just because I I work nights, I get yeah. off six a.m. I'm gonna go to class at noon. I don't need to eat after class. I don't need to eat before class. You know, I'm gonna go back to sleep for a little bit. Back up, you know, around five six o'clock. You know, all said and done, that that's an eleven twelve hour block right there. I'm not going to eat anything till after uh, mm -hmm. after my evening classes. Mm -hmm. So you know when it's it's not uncommon for me to not eat a single thing from about 5 a.m. when I eat breakfast at the office until somewhere around 9 o'clock at yeah, night. Exactly. And it's like, yeah. no, mm. I don't even realize it. No. Yeah. I, right. I, like if I felt hungry, I would probably eat something. Do it in my 20s. I I'll make like a sandwich when I go to work and by 9, 9 a.m. I'm like eating that sandwich, starving. <laughs> yeah. True stories and not not anymore. God, what I used to do, I used to eat, the, like, you know, remember the part? What are those Milano cookies? Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Bag, the, the bag. Bags. Bags. Yeah. So I used to eat a bag of those for breakfast. That was your... with with chocolate at, milk. At what yeah. age was this? So, so this was two ago. years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just. But I think back now, I'm like, what the fuck was I doing? Chocolate milk, big old thing of like shitty chocolate milk, and a bag you of fuck cookies. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. that, it was for definitely breakfast. delicious, right? Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, <laughs> yummy. it's the best. Yeah, I can't do it no more. No. I still uh. remember uh, I remember a time in my life where I did not know what diets were going to work with, for me. So I, I was trying all kinds of stuff. And for a while, I was like very convinced that like the best diet for me was I had to eliminate like – most of the junk food, but things like a baked potato, that's clearly healthy for me. Right. And yogurt, yogurt's totally fine. Like yogurt and baked potatoes, that's the way to go. Mm. <laughs> well, makes just, sense. I, yeah. see, I see logic. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like it wasn't, yeah. right. but like, like now I know the way my body actually yes. right. responds. I'm like, yeah, oh, that was terrible for right. me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there should be some research and development and consideration of your own, like, uh, you know, your own body and right. your preferences. Yeah, and this is what, what I think, you know, when you, when all we're all when we were younger, they, this is wasn't taught to us. This this like this is what was shown us on TV. Our parents gave it to us, and we just 
that's what we did. Mm-hmm. But no, we, what's, but, what's scary mm-hmm. is that the same generation now, the young kids are doing the same shit. Mm-hmm. So I, I don't. Get, I see my nephews and nieces eating have, shit all the time. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? Did they have more ready learn? access to the information? They still have to want to do it. I mean, I, like. Dude, That's what's even stranger French, now. French fries and chocolate shakes are freaking delicious. I don't and, disagree with you. And if you don't get fat from them because you're you've got a 16 year old's metabolism, you're going to eat French fries and chocolate shakes but like I they're going out of style. That, I don't think that the pastas and the breads that are now are the same as it was. When, you know, in possibly, the 90s, possibly. In the 90s. Uh-huh. I just don't think it's the same. Mm-hmm. I just really don't. I think you're just old, man. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> but I look and I'm just like. Should they be eating that right now? I don't know, man. It seems a lot of sugar and a lot of shit they eat. I'm just mm-hmm. like, this is crazy. My wife uh, probably doesn't want me talking about this too much, but like she uh, she likes soda a lot. Okay. okay? And I like soda too. That's exactly the reason I don't drink you it. You don't drink it? <laughs> <laughs> well, she hasn't gotten to that stage in her life yet. So, But she really likes soda. And for the longest time, you know, she, she was, you know, drinking it all the time, all the time. And... I can't remember what the Genesis moment was, but she figured out through kind of experimenting around with, I think, craft sodas actually, like that she had a constant headache and it was from corn syrup. Mm. She can have a pure cane sugar soda yeah. and be totally fine. Mm-hmm. She has like a normal Pepsi. Mm-hmm. Floored. Yeah, just absolutely destroyed by it. Huh. And it's like, okay, one. How did you go through life, you know, like having three, four, five sodas a day or whatever craziness it was, yeah. you know, and just like, oh, yeah, this headache is fine. This is normal. Right. You know, that's and, what happens. It becomes normal. Right. You can right. Just deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. So like I said, I don't remember the exact moment where it was, but yeah, yeah. yeah she, yeah, she doesn't have, she, she's so, she drinks way less soda now than she used to, okay. but she does not have soda with corn syrup in it anymore. And like of all the crazy things, like corn syrups and friggin' everything. Mm, right. You know, so you got to really watch your labels and stuff like that. I, I guess in the end of the day, when it comes to diet, it's all about moderation. Yeah. Just basically see how many calories you exert versus how many calories you take in. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm. S- simple as that. Yeah. Generally true. Although that can be very enablist if you're like, well, I worked out hard today, so I'm going to go eat an entire thing of Oreos. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> didn't lose any weight today. Didn't gain any weight today. It's fine. <laughs> Even now. <laughs> today was a good day. It was a good day. Oh, man. That's funny. Dude, Game of Thrones is coming out. It is. Very soon. Yeah. I'm very excited about this. You know, last season. I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to jinx us here. Okay. But the guy who's in charge of booking the podcast may have stupidly booked the podcast right over the premiere of Game of Thrones. Did you really? What are you saying to me? What? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> Glad you yeah. watched Game of Thrones? Uh, not really. With Nico, uh, Nikolai introduced me to the show. I watched a few episodes and I did like it. Yeah. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Yeah. But I never developed the addiction and, right. uh, and the habit. Yeah. Well, uh, that being said, I, I still do watch shows and I get addicted to other shows. Yeah, Just yeah. Uh, Game of Thrones is uh, not one of those. Yeah, I would never think I would like him because I'm not into like fantasy fantasy stuff, mm-hmm. you know, too much. But for some reason, I, get, I don't know. I just... I mean, it's... it's- it's probably the production, one of the, yeah. the, everything about it just great. And some of the stuff, there's definitely holes in the story. It's all about creating a drama. I mean, right. look at uh, Walking Dead, you know, right? right? So in the God. beginning, there was a shock of uh, zombies and such. Right. But eventually, like uh, uh, the, virtually the show is about morality in extreme circumstances. Yeah. That, that's all, you know, a- and everything comes down to that. Right. Do you watch Walking Dead? Yes, I do. So what do you think about this season? I, uh, you know what? Uh, I think I, Kind of over eight, man. I think I'm done with them. I know. Kind Me of, too. sort of, yeah. It's yeah, yeah. I was bad. a big, big fan. and Is it actually like, bad hey. now? It's bad. I'm several seasons behind and it's I'm bad. probably never going to catch yeah, up. It's, so. it's, not it's bad. Much. It's getting, re- it's just, it's very slow. Everything's slow now. Mm. I don't know why they're trying to character build anymore. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it yeah, just yeah. gets, they're just, it looks like they're just trying to stretch it out. Stop it already. Yeah, like, just done. J- yeah. Just kill everyone already yeah. <laughs> or unveil what, yeah, yeah. what's going to happen. Because you, did you see the part where, spoiler alert, the helicopter takes, uh huh. I, I mean, I don't know what yeah, to think like, about that. Yeah, come the fuck on. Yeah. Like helicopters now? Now, yeah. I haven't seen one in eight seasons and now right. there's a helicopter. Right, exactly. Yeah. Like, it's, it's getting ridiculous, but yes. Game of Thrones, however, still fine. Game of Thrones, yeah. 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 Well, absolutely. Maybe <laughs> sure. I'll, I'll get into it. White yeah. Walkers, okay. 
Yeah, um, no, so Stranger so, Things is what I'm waiting for. Yeah, Stranger the Things. Next, yes, next and one. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai. I'm yes. super excited. Is that about. coming back out? There's yes, season two. Second up. season is. Man, it took uh, a long time. Yeah, that took a long time to come on the second season. I mean, has it? Well, it, I guess they need to see if year, it sells right? well and it like it it, it, it it reviews were like extraordinary. I think not a single person I spoke to about Cobra Kai dislikes it. Everybody like has only crazy good things it's to say. It's the best. It's, it's awesome. awesome. I love it. Dude, it's it's like it's uh it just the right amount of cheese and yep. 80s nostalgia. Yes, I exactly. could not get enough. This exactly. guy here almost convinced me to not watch it because he presented it to me in the wrong way. Mm. Yeah. I hadn't seen it How yet. How did he present it? Well, so he's like, hey, have you ever seen that YouTube breakdown that explains how Daniel is actually the villain yes, of, yes, of yes. the Karate Kid? That I'm was like, awesome. Perspective yeah. is everything. Is it? Right? And I'm like, Fucking yeah, I've seen that. I hate that video because it's a it's a bold faced lie. It's like just it's it's cherry picking yeah. and you know, like it's being like, a sophist. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'm I'm like no, I I don't want to see anything based mm. off of that. You know, because that was it's, the way you, you kind of presented right, it to right, me, right. and it's not like that at all. No, mm -hmm. you know, like in, in the grand scheme of things, it, it obviously we're getting the other side view, mm -hmm. and, and and we're getting sympathy for characters that we had literally no sympathy for, mm -hmm. and it's super well done, and I loved. Every minute of it, and yeah. thank God I didn't listen to Zito. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I paid for that because I, I binge watched it here at the office. I, I was like, I can't believe this is, mm -hmm. this is. I just had to watch it. All. Tracy, my, my, my fiance Tracy, never watched uh, the movie or whatever, and we, we could not stop watching it. It was yeah. so awesome. Wait, yeah. wait she, so Tracy. she's only seen Cobra Kai, or did you make her watch only the movie Cobra first? Kai. Oh wow, only Cobra Kai. She That's a not. strange she's experience never seen the there. Kids at all. Oh. Yes. So she doesn't get any of it. And mm -hmm. she still loves it. Yeah. So that speaks. Yes. The, the, see, when I watched it, it was 100% like, I'm like, oh my God, this is the most beautiful nostalgia bomb mm -hmm. I've ever felt. Mm -hmm. Like, nostalgia this is amazing. Bomb. That's right, man. That's right. <laughs> um, but like, like, not to take anything away from it, but like, I, I was. I was solidly convinced for me that that was the main thing that was drawing me in because there were so many little nods to the original movie right. mm -hmm. and like everything ties in beautifully. I'm like, they did a super good job of this. These people love it. was great too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, that's kind of cool that she's never even seen it and yeah. she loves it. That's yeah. that's crazy. So, which only goes to show you how good the show is, you know? That, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, the original Karate Kid like is course. the reason I I initially got into yeah. martial arts. Yeah. So. So that, that that holds a very special spot in my heart. Huh. Yeah, that original Karate Kid, man, that changed yeah. a lot of people's I, lives. I'm not old enough to know, like, but I would like to know, like, I'd like to talk to somebody who, like, like, like uh, when we had uh, Jeff Kim in, he kind of he he alluded to it a little bit. I'd like to talk to somebody who was like running a karate studio during that period of time like mm -hmm. what what was business like before the karate kid and then what was the crazy boom right. after karate kid or even the best of the best yes best of that's another good one yeah because that's one of the best that came out 88 i want to say yeah, 86 so that, late eight, mid to late 80s right 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 so another, another, one. another one no retreat no surrender yeah, yeah that, was, that was yeah. huge oh, yeah great when the bruce lee spirit comes and teaches kids uh yes. teaches a kid uh karate and he's sleeping oh, man. God, that was so good. The, the Van Damme Seagal era was was particularly interesting, but mm -hmm. I didn't personally yeah. see that many people signing up for Aikido because they wanted to be mm -hmm. like Steven Seagal. Mm -hmm. I saw plenty of people sign up for for karate and, and whatnot, and you know, kung fu and well, of course, ninjutsu, taekwondo, you know, be, because they wanted to be like certain action heroes. So and then Jeff Speakman's Perfect Weapon when that came out, I always feel like that's an obscure one. But so many really? people that I know, like that do martial arts, are are aware of that one. It's kind of weird. Initial scene with a cut with a, the power song yeah. that, that, that was dope that was awesome well, one day we'll get Jeff Speakman on the podcast yes. and we'll explain yeah that. we have to yeah, we'll be like listen you've influenced countless lives we're, we're, we're gonna have I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not don't, gonna, jinx gonna I'm don't gonna jinx it don't jinx it not I mean but there's feelers out there to get uh, sensei on the podcast from the uh, original from Cobra Kai from Cobra Kai yeah. the man himself so uh, we'll see if that that comes to fruition. Mm -hmm. so, Make it happen, Zito. Make I'm, it happen. I'm trying. I think we might have a better chance of getting him than Hickson. So <laughs> I'm just putting that out there. It might be cheaper. It might be cheaper <laughs> for sure. It might be cheaper too. But uh, although I would pay for Hickson, I'm not gonna lie. Well, you put it on air now. We have to do it. Yes. <laughs> not a problem. <laughs> the gauntlet has been thrown. Hickson down. listens, so he knows. He right, knows right, right. No, Hickson listens as we as we establish. You know, BJ Penn listens. Yes. You know, right. 
Our, our fans didn't probably realize that, but he definitely does. I get a lot of feedback from that Pete the Greek episode. Lots of feedback. <laughs> Pete the Greek, do not fact check that episode at all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. I put it out there. No need, no need to fact check anything on that episode. <laughs> it was fantastic, though. Anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know who I spoke to? I talked to the guys over at Grappling Rewind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was going with them. Instagram. They're doing pretty good. You know, they hit me up on Instagram. They wanted to just chit chat. They're great guys. One of our guys that trains, uh, um, Alex, he's friends with them. Okay. So, you know, just talking about, you know, how they do things, how we yeah, do things. Yeah, they got a great so podcast. They do. And, man, like, <laughs> after talking, I'm like, dude, I feel so bad for you guys. You guys do a lot. Like, they, like, yeah. we come in basically. Uh, we hit the play button and I give it to Bruno. He just does it. And that's about it. They have to watch all the fucking events. They have to go through yeah, take, taking record. Taking notes, all the this. notes. I'm like, and- dude, you guys are spending hours on pawn. He's like, yeah, I'm like, that's amazing. Right. You guys are. Doing- I hope it pays off for them in spades. They, they, they love jujitsu and this is why they're doing it, which is fantastic. That's why we do it, you know, right. but man, they put a lot of time in that. It's yeah. fantastic. Yeah, so I, if you guys they, haven't checked them out, please do. Yeah, definitely it's do. Definitely worth it. Especially if you miss an event, they really highlight the uh, the events. They did Midwest Finishers too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is coming up again. Yeah, they, 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 their, their highlight video was awesome for yeah. it. Did Omar hit you up yet? Uh, you, yes, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so how long are you in town for? Uh, till tomorrow morning. Just came for a seminar. Yeah. At, at one of your affiliates here, right? Yes, yes. So... We should probably talk about that. We, we've talked yeah, about karate kids. How did it go? Uh, which part? The seminar itself? Yeah. Well, uh, I think it went well. I, I never truly know, you know. Uh, uh, I mean, I attended and I thought it went well. So Thank you. Yes, there we go. So, yeah, it went well. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Four stars it's, on you. It's, uh, <laughs> uh, oh, you know what? A, a friend of mine uh, thinking he's doing me a favor put my academy on Yelp. And I oh, was God. Like, do not do that. Because, you know, they they like crazy. It, 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 Yelp as a business is very hard to deal with. They're very aggressive to a degree when it's like super obnoxious. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, I, I don't want to advertise uh, through that venue. There's right. Google and Facebook. I, I'd rather do that. Mm-hmm. Vlad has a perfect five from hundreds of people. His academy. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Check it out. Yes, I have, I have good reviews. So, yeah, it was my second time uh, at Tom Wheeler's uh, Olympus BJJ. Okay. Uh, what, what town is that again? St. Charles. St. Charles. Thank you very much. You're a great guy, you know, very skilled and... Uh, Former guest s- on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Somehow he saw value in uh, what I have to offer. Yeah. And he's one of my affiliates. It's great. Yeah. How, who else is an affiliate out here? Uh, just him. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, we had another gentleman from Wisconsin, uh, Cody Stray. Cody, hello, if you're listening. So he's interested. Uh, he, he's a police officer in Wisconsin, uh, central Wisconsin. Uh, he runs a, a fairly small dojo where they do judo, jiu-jitsu, sambo. Yeah. And uh, so my, maybe the, he'll be another affiliate or whatnot. Yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. Is sambo, could, could sambo be utilized for police? Oh, absolutely. Strangely, you say that, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah? very much so. Yeah? yeah. I don't know. A lot about well, Sambo. okay, okay. So Sambo is uh, is an acronym. Did you know that? I don't think I did. Okay, so it stands for Samo Borona Bez Oruje Sambo. I never say it that cool. So. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You ne- if yeah. you ever said well, that, it didn't there, sound like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, you can say Samo Zashita or Samo Barona, which virtually means the same thing. So for English speaking people, I usually stay away from Samo Zashita because it sounds like some of the shit. <laughs> All right. So I say Samo Barona. <laughs> that's, that's the first one that I learned. So. Okay. Self protection. Right. So it was designed specifically for military and special forces, etc., to 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 fight, you know, uh, and apprehend uh, maybe even uh, uh, apprehend uh, criminals that are. Um, uh, armed and such and such but uh eventually like anything it became like, like uh, brazilian jiu-jitsu was a uh, uh, self-defense discipline too but it became a sport mm-hmm. same uh fate happened uh, to sambo uh there is combat there is even two combat you know what three combat sambos so there's military combat sambo right a tactical type of deal there is a combat sambo as we know it in which uh, Ferro Yemelianka competed when you wear shin guards and uh, it's a fierce you know fierce uh, under fierce umbrella and there is alternative combat sambo association in which Habib was the champion that's oh, the one wow. when you don't have to wear uh, headgear or shin guards or shoes 
but rules are uh, minor differences in rules, but virtually the same rules. And they fight on a square as opposed to a ring. So, you know, already that. Huh. Uh, Stephen Capford tried uh, um, freestyle sambo, trademarked, uh, has had some competitions and tournaments uh, under the rules. So, uh, yeah, sambo began as a, as a tactical uh, martial art, eventually became a sport. Huh. Yes. The did so and, and the nature of sambo, I'm sorry, nature of sambo is very like go get type of aggressive stand up part is perfect for cops. It is. Huh? Yes. Yes. The, not, the way I see it, maybe somebody <clears throat> can disagree with me. You know, it's not too like they're not slamming people on their heads like a well, judo. I mean, always an option. It's an option. It's always an option. Yeah, yes. Right. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But um, like one of the things that I think is is kind of cool about sambo is above and beyond its you know it, its literal military history mm -hmm. a, a, as an art like many of the tactics that you would use to control somebody are kind of interwoven into the rules of the system already mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so like you don't as a cop want to be focusing on chokeholds because they're basically barred by the departments so okay well sambo doesn't generally teach chokes unless you're doing combat sambo don't have to worry about having like, like reflexive need to strangle somebody um, most of the ground controlling techniques are based on arm locking mechanics. Okay. Um, there's a heavy emphasis on the use of pins. Yep. And if you know how to pin somebody, mm -hmm. you inherently know how to control them. Yep. Like, like subdue them and wait for help. Right. 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 Uh, and then, you know, by giving them a large variety of takedown options, you know, uh, in, in the process of doing that, you, you're, you're also building confidence in terms of your ability to, to do stand up. Like, right. like, you know, there, there's literally nothing worse. And, uh, you know, if you've spent some time on World Star or hung out on the right Reddits and, and whatnot, you know, there's nothing worse than seeing a guy who's like, I know how to handle this situation once it's on the ground, but I have no capacity to get it there right now. Right. So he's just like, you know, trying to dive on a leg. And he's – this is especially bad when you're like the smaller person and the other mm -hmm. person just just beast mode out of your, your takedown. Yeah. So like I feel like Sambo – has that strong element of, you know, you, there, there's a huge variety of takedowns. Um, back in the day, I would say it was, it was fairly, you know, like fairly similar to the, the variety of takedowns that are in judo, but with the rule changes in judo over the last, uh, what are we at? Like seven years, seven years now. Yeah. Over the last seven years, uh, that edge definitely goes to Sambo, not just because there's more freedom in the ways that you can grip mm -hmm. in that there's almost no restrictions, like very few restrictions. Um, but also because you can, you can attack the whole body with takedowns. Mm -hmm. And, uh, whenever people ask me for, uh, what's like a good supplemental art for jujitsu, uh, for, for takedowns, I usually always emphasize Sambo over judo for okay. that exact reason, mm -hmm. okay. because Sambo can offer a nearly unrestricted gripping plus leg locks where judo can only offer nowadays, you know, competitive judo can only offer a certain portion of throws and whatever judo guys can offer in Nawaz, jiu jitsu can overcome that by far, you know? So Sambo is honestly by logic, not even my preference is, is a better, uh, uh, better, uh, additional art. Yeah. If, it, it, if I were, you know, it, if I were to design a curriculum and I had to choose like the core values of one art and another art and like what meshes best together. So long as we're not talking about adding striking, because that complicates the conversation mm -hmm. considerably. I'd say jujitsu and sambo are classically near perfect complements mm -hmm. to each other. Mm -hmm. And that's why that's why Vlad does the fusion. That's <laughs> right. Did uh did the Russian president did Putin do sambo? Yes, sambo and judo, yes. And judo, yeah. both, right? Mm -hmm. Did you I, get well, the train with it? I think he self identifies he, primarily you know, as a judo. He's cousin. my dad's age. He's a little bit older than me. Right. Yes. But he was never in like the that Sambo school you were talking He's about? He's from uh, Leningrad or nowadays St. Petersburg. I'm from Moscow. Okay. Two different cities. I see. That'd be crazy to see him in there, mm -hmm. right? Do people, no, would people actually throw him? Yes. Like, would that yes. happen? Yes. Would he, like... There's a, there's a really, char there's a really charming that, <laughs> there's a really charming video of a young boy doing randori mm -hmm. with, with Putin and... Mm -hmm. And Putin. like an eleven-year-old young boy, or are we yeah, talking? probably, yeah, yeah. probably in that uh, age. Okay, well, that's and, and, and that makes Putin, sense. Putin's like, you know, go ahead and throw me. And the kid like looks over at the coach uh, uh, and is like, "Is this okay?" Uh, uh, and he gets the nod, uh, uh, and gets the nod. And he's like, "Bam!" <laughs> <laughs> man, yeah, um, man. The, I don't know if I brought this up on the podcast. I know I've brought it up to friends, and like, 
it's going to get – this is several years ago now, okay? It's going to get to the phase where I'm not going to believe this existed because I've tried to look it up since then. But right now I'm still in the, no, it's a global conspiracy mode, okay? There was this awesome video of Putin visiting this, uh, this, this uh, gymnasium where they did – wrestling and judo and sambo and like all the athletes are on the mat and they're all super excited that he's there and he's like you know there's cameras everywhere and he's like watching with his delegation and as they work out and whatnot and uh, at one point like he he brings over one of the the judo black belts and he like demonstrates a throw and putin's got like solid judo you like me he's not like an olympian or anything like that but he's clearly like a black belt level yes. judo okay yes. so like he demonstrates and he's like you know do it like this type thing and then um he brings this freestyle wrestler over, and and I distinctly remember you. Do I you know this video? Yes, okay, yes. hold on. That's cool that I have some verification of this, and that I'm not just going crazy because mm -hmm. you go mm -hmm. try to Google this video up. You'll never find it now. And um, he asked for the the wrestler to like demonstrate a takedown, and he does. Um, I can't remember what it's actually called, but but the front headlock suplex mm -hmm. where you like take him over mm -hmm. in a front headlock with so like mm -hmm. a savage. Mm -hmm. it, it looks like you're going to break their it's, neck. It's, it's like a sumigayashi, only instead of rolling, you arch. Yeah, you arch. Yes. Exactly, exactly. Uh, Katsingano does it all the time, yes. actually. It's, uh, it's a really good headlock. Hat Chancery, maybe? Yeah, I can't remember. Uh, the the yeah, name escapes yeah. me at the moment. But regardless, so he does that. And then Putin like, like brings him over. And he's like, I'm going to show you a throw now. And he's kind of talking to the audience and explaining and he goes to reach for the dude's sleeve like four times in a row <laughs> before he realizes, oh wait, he's he's a wrestler. He's wearing a singlet. There's no sleeve to grab. And then he then he like corrects himself I, I and dance, yeah yeah and, and and does the throw anyhow. But like I was super fascinated by that particular moment because I'm like. Dude, he's such a like he's such a dedicated judoka yeah. that in this moment he's yes. reaching for the mm -hmm. sleeve that isn't even there. But he was probably actually embarrassed by that yeah. fact, and it is now scrubbed from uh, the internet. You cannot yes. find it. It does not exist. The guys in gulag. <laughs> <laughs> that poor wrestler. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so cold. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Now that I've thrown that out there on air, somebody's going to find it and send it to me, I hope. But you can you can find portions of the visit. Like, yeah. like, but you but cannot, not that part. You cannot find the full-length video. I can't find the – it's funny that you said I the Google, I think. Saw, yeah. I can't find <laughs> the wrestler demonstrating the takedown. <laughs> and I definitely cannot find the, the, the portion where, where Putin's reaching for a sleeve that doesn't yeah. exist. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. It's crazy. Well, in, in Russia, Judokas and Sambis train together, basically. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Yeah. Now, did you have that experience at Sambo Seventy? No. Because no, wasn't... for 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 some time, yes. Right, but right. The, yeah, it's later. Um, what happened? By the time I was like um, slowing down with Sambo, Soviet Union broke up, and the infrastructure went kaput or whatever. Uh, 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 funding stopped, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So the only uh, reason Sambo Seventy survived for a few years because they kind of switched to judo for a little bit because judo still has Olympic prestige versus uh, versus Sambo or whatnot. Right. But when I started in '84, uh, only Sambo. I never heard of no judo for a few years. But yeah. then it started to trickle in, and like I said back then, it was virtually like interchangeable things with minor adaptations. Right. 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 And and there are guys that are like Olympians in judo. Mm -hmm. They're like world champions in sambo. Like uh, yeah, um, Hash Batar, Tsan Batar, a Mongolian player. He's a world champion in both sambo and uh, and judo, mm -hmm. and uh, Kazakh Kuresh too. Yeah, <laughs> which I don't know why why he competed there. I'm like, come on, man! Just, you already got two gold medals and two great like, sports. I, just, like, yeah. I, I like uh, things. Yeah, you know? like, yeah. <laughs> he's he's also going around just collecting up medals in various sports. Yeah, you know? yeah. So yeah, like there, there's a there's a lot of interesting crossover. And it's one of those things too, because like I'll hear jujitsu guys talk about sambo when they don't think I'm listening, and they're like, oh yeah, no sambo, yeah, it's probably easy to deal with. They don't know how to do chokes. I'm like, dude, every guy I know that does sambo, particularly in America, mind you, because most of the paths into sambo in America are you're either a judoka mm -hmm. yeah. or a wrestler back yeah. in the day. Yeah, there's always okay. a crossover. Yeah, so like every every guy who I know that does sambo also knows how to strangle the shit out of you. Right. So it's like, yeah, no, good luck with that. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Man. What's on the agenda for tonight? Um, just some nice dinner somewhere. Not decided yet. We'll figure yeah. it out. Yeah, after the podcast, go home, shower, get ready and yeah, somewhere. What time is your flight tomorrow? Uh, I'm departing at 10, so I should be there by 8.30 or so. Midway or O'Hare? O'Hare. Oh, O'Hare, oh, yeah. Nice. I think we're going to a Bulgarian restaurant. I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> First time I visited, and that's when I, uh, uh, Nikolai and I, we were friends on uh, Facebook. 
So the first time I uh, visited and met him and, and Javi 2014, July yeah. or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. So we went to the Bulgarian place and oh my God. What Bulgarian place? Blue, there's plenty of those. Are there? Uh, yes, two day delicious. It's very affordable, big portions and, and yummy. Like yeah. all three things that will make your dining experience excellent. Nice. Full big portions, good food. What was the third one? Affordability. There Affordability. Yeah, yes. Just plates and plates full yes. of meat. <laughs> delicious, yeah. delicious yes. meat. Yes, grilled. <laughs> uh, are we going to show uh, any technique today? I believe so. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. You, you're volunteering, right? You got your gi? No, I'm not no of course he doesn't have his gi today. No, no he knew her filming technique, didn't bring <laughs> the gi. <laughs> 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 the, I, I'm the film. And, and uh, yeah. uh, how did this, this happen? Javi's the talent. <laughs> 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 so, Vlad, uh, let's wrap it up. Let's go, uh, let's go do some technique. Let's do some wrestling. <laughs> What's, uh, where can people find you? Uh, where can people find me? Okay, thank you very much, guys. Yes, guys, if you, if you like, I have a actually pretty cool Instagram account. There is no food there and no family pictures almost. It's all dedicated to Sambo, Jiu Jitsu, Judo, and variety of grappling styles. Uh, uh, it's called Sambo Fusion, Sambo underscore Fusion. Or you can go on uh, Kulikov Grappling Academy on Facebook, find me there. Or uh, www.sambofusion.com, that's my uh, website. Cool. Come and train. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Vlad's easy guy to find if you're looking for uh, any kind of Sambo instructionals. If yeah. you don't have an opportunity to train with him directly, you've got instructionals you. through Budo. Budo videos. You've got um, BJJ, BJJ Fanatics. BJJ Fanatics. Jiu Jitsu. Jiu -Jitsu. And Grappler's Guide. Right. I've, oh, got, wow. I've got all of these. So Thank you, Happy. Thank <laughs> you. Um, I appreciate the love and support. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And uh, yeah, guys. Oh, and YouTube channel. I, uh, I used to have a paid uh, Facebook group. And I, I stopped uh, charging people for that, so the Facebook group still exists. I just don't pour videos into that, but I'm trying to get my YouTube channel going. So guys, uh, check it out. It's Sambo Fusion again. Oh, cool. Some you know some cool, cool free stuff. Nice, yes. awesome. Well, Vlad, man, I'm glad you finally made it out here, man. It's been Thank awesome. you, my my pleasure. Thank you for yeah. the invite. Yeah, and uh, Javi, good job. Sure uh, thing. <laughs> glad to help. <laughs> All, right. All right, we'll see you guys later. Bye. So long. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Very Hard to Submit. Go to VHTSNY.com and check out their kimonos, compression gear, and apparel. This is a brand we are excited to be supported by. Their gear is high quality with a clean design. Go to VHTSNY.com and see for yourself. Hey, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. For more information about Grappler Union Podcasts, you could visit us at our website at GrapplerUnion.com. You can follow us on Instagram at GrapplerUnion. Please like us on Facebook. Be sure to subscribe on iTunes. And all of our episodes are available on our YouTube channel. Say what? Be sure, be sure to subscribe. Yeah, subscribe to all that shit. <laughs> um, you got to do another take, right? Oh.